um, because like the, a lot of the elements that it was set out to explore, like don't go away. And, um, you, you know, this movie, it was inspired by a, a short story called eight o'clock in the morning, uh, which eventually got translated into a comic book called nada. And throughout the, the movie, um, no one ever calls the rowdy, rowdy Piper character, uh, by his name. So like he has no name in the movie, but in the credits, uh, he's, he's called nada, which basically is, I think, Spanish for nothing. Yeah. And, uh, in the comics, wasn't his name John nada though? Uh, I think it was Greg nada, okay. but in the movie it was John, John nada. Oh, okay. Um, so in, um, in the short story, basically it, it's kind of the same thing where, the, the main character goes to like a hypnosis exhibition in a theater and he accidentally gets hypnotized. And when he wakes back up, he's able to see all these aliens who are secretly running things. And once they realize he can see, they give him a, like a hypnotic command that, you know, you're very old and you're going to die at eight o'clock in the morning of a heart attack. And so like once that command's given, it's basically a death sentence. So he has until eight o'clock in the morning to try to warn humanity about these alien overlords. And he goes around and he's like killing all these aliens and, and stuff like that and trying desperately to convince people that, you know, he's not crazy. And, um, John Carpenter was such a fan of both the short story and the comic book that he, he optioned both of them so that he could, you know, write this movie. And, uh, his inspiration for doing so was kind of in direct response to, uh, Reaganomics, um, at the time that this movie was made, it was like the whole, like, um, it was called the me generation and Ronald Reagan was president. And there was just this kind of like resurgence of hyper capitalism in, in the country. And John Carpenter, he's kind of like a hippy dippy type type guy to begin with, but he is a capitalist, but he believes that unfettered capitalism and consumerism is dangerous because it creates like greed and corruption and stuff like that. And so, not he, wrong. and so he wanted to make a movie that addressed that and they live is basically what we got. So, uh, the social and political commentary in this movie is kind of at the forefront, but, you know, kind of dressed up in this like fun, funny sci-fi action, uh, movie, um, facade that, you know, kind of slips in the, the, the subversive takes on, on capitalism and Reaganomics and stuff like that. And it was actually funny because Rowdy Roddy Piper, he was a big fan of Ronald Reagan. And so when he was doing press for the movie, like he refused to talk about any of the political theme because <laughs> he was like, I don't, I don't want to bash Reagan. Every time they look at an alien and the alien realizes that they're looking at them, they all start whispering into their little, that's freaky, into man. Their that, like, crazy little watches. Yeah. Their little communicator watches. Like it, that does freak you out. If you're watching the movie, they have the, the low whispering. I'm sorry. You can see us. I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's like, oh, it just it throws chills up your spine when you're watching and, it. And all the subliminal signs, like the billboards and magazines and stuff, where it says "obey, consume," uh, you know, "marry and reproduce," stuff like that. That was all taken from the comic book uh, version of of the source material, where uh, they had like these things and they were peppered everywhere. And so, like, it's just so disturbing because uh, all the scenes where it's. Re- the stuff is revealed, the world beneath the world, it's all shot in black and white. Mm-hmm. And it's very stark. And then at the end, when they succeed in destroying the satellite that's keeping everyone kind of hypnotized, um, it goes into color. And, you know, there, there, there's a fun little dig. At, you know, we were talking about uh, Godzilla 98 yeah. a while back and about how they were making fun of Siskel and Ebert in, in that movie with the, the mayor and his assistant. And, <laughs> and in this movie, it, it ends literally with like a big dig at, uh, <laughs> at Siskel and Ebert where they're, they're actually aliens and they're like ragging on, <laughs> on John Carpenter movies. <laughs> you know, so John Carpenter was just like a big middle finger to those guys. 